Hello, this is Tim Congdon, Chairman of the Institute of International Monetary Research at the University of Buckingham. I'm giving the latest monthly update on monetary trends around the world and also my thoughts on these trends. Um, last month I gave a general theoretical presentation about the determination of asset prices and I focused on the prices of variable income assets such as uh, equities, property, uh, real estate uh, and so on. I did promise last time I was going to talk about the determination of the price of fixed income assets or bonds and I do want to return to that but I've decided that more important right now is the discussion of the monetary situation in the United States where I've changed my mind about what's going on. For much of last year I was concerned that in America there was a slowdown in money growth underway and likely to get worse in early 2019 and I therefore was worried about a growth slowdown in the economy and the outside risks of a recession. This kind of analysis has been more or less right for the Eurozone and the global growth slowdown of late 2018 certainly has happened. But in practice, the USA has been, the demand there has been fairly robust and the economy is still growing okay. And the trouble actually in late 2018 came not just from the Eurozone, but also from China. Anyway, what I want to do now is to review money trends in the USA and to argue that things are okay. A bit to my surprise, but anyway. The first chart I want to present to you today is the chart on money growth and uh, movements in normal GDP going back to 1960. The red line is normal GDP, the blue line is money. Some erratic movements towards the the second half of that period, I suppose, in the 1990s and the 2000s. Over the whole period, you've had a 7.5% a year increase in the quantity of money. You've had nominal GDP up by about 6.5% a year. And by the way, at the start of this period, Milton Friedman said that he forecast that the gap between these two numbers would be about 1%. And lo and behold, it is. The explanation is probably that the American economy has become more complex, greater financial sophistication, more financial assets, and so people's wealth is growing a bit faster than their incomes, and money is used to buy and sell assets, as well as to buy and sell goods and services. Now, I mean, think about this chart. A lot of instability sort of mountain peaks and then valleys and a lot of a lot of ups and downs all right but then just look at the last it's a long period uh, almost 60 years look at the last eight years I'm just going to focus on these because they're what we're more concerned about in terms of looking on into 2019 stability and indeed, what I've done in this chart is to look not at 60 years, but at eight years. This is the period 2011 to 2018 inclusive. I've had to guess a little bit about what happens to normal GDP at the end of last year. but And you can see that all these peaks and troughs, all the mountains and valleys, has given way to two lines, two straight lines that are almost parallel to each other. I mean, I've deliberately adjusted the chart so that the axes are the same as for the chart with 60 years. And what I'm trying to demonstrate is that the last eight years have been very different from the 50 years before that. An economist may be a bit ashamed of the Great Recession, but curiously, in America at least, the last eight years has been a period of extraordinary stability of growth of normal GDP with very little inflation. Really amazingly good macroeconomic performance. 
maybe not much growth of output compared with the past, but certainly a lot of stability. Now, the problem we've got thinking ahead is, you know, is this something that's going to continue? And if you believe, as I do, that the ultimate determinant of the growth of nominal national income is the growth of the amount of money, then it's the growth of the amount of money that we want to focus on. Now, what then uh, are the key forces driving the growth of money? Money nowadays is dominated by bank deposits. The great bulk of payments are from bank accounts. The size of payments by notes and coin is trivial. And obviously, bank deposits are liabilities of banks. And the growth of those deposits depends upon the growth of bank assets, which have two main kinds. Their claims on the private sector, new bank loans being the most important kind of new claim. And then there are claims on the state, on the government, that sometimes come into play. So those are the two main, if the banks extend new credit to the private sector or the government, then bank deposits grow, there's new money in the economy. Now I want now to show you a picture of bank credit going back to yeah, back about 25 years, if I can find this picture. And the striking thing here is a lot of ups and downs between the mid-1990s and the 2006-2007, but all within a band of 0 to 10%. Okay. And then you get, these are all annual growth rates, and then quarterly data. And then you get this crash at the 2007, but then much more into 2008, 2009, 2010. And I've argued in many pieces of work that this crash is explicable partly by the problems that the banks themselves faced in that period. To some extent it was their fault, but above all, the main reason for this crash in the growth of bank credit was that the central banks and regulators demanded that banks have much more capital relative to their risk assets and their balance sheets. And the result of this was a, was a crash in the, in the growth of bank credit, crash in the growth of money, Great Recession. Now, um, we then look on to more recent last eight years of this period. You'll see the growth of bank credit uh, recovered a bit, 2010, 2011. Then it accelerated quite nicely up to a figure of about 6-7% annualized. And then, what we're really interested in terms of 2019, we're falling away again. Suppose we didn't know the last kind of six months of data, the last two quarters. And suppose we were also told that the Federal Reserve was tightening policy and wanted to shrink its balance sheet, so it's going to sell off the assets acquired in the QE episodes of 2008 to 2014. This is the, the chart of the growth of credit to the private sector. See that turning turning down. And then you're also told that the Federal Reserve was going to be selling off assets so that bank credit to the public sector also going down. Then you'd be very worried that there's going to be a slowdown in money growth in the United States. And that's what I was worried about last year. Now what's happened since then is Perhaps a number of things to mention. You'll see that, that the growth of bank credit has kicked up again. That's credit to the private sector. And then perhaps there are three things that uh, I should mention here. First of all, Jay Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, having towards the end of last year appeared to be very tough on inflation, since then has made much more pragmatic noises and has indicated that interest rates will not be increased, uh, perhaps in 2019, depending upon how uh, the American economy and to some extent how the world economy evolves. We've had 
as I say, this recovery in, that's the second thing, we've had this recovery in bank credit to private sector. I think some of this may be to do with the the watering down of the anti-bank provisions in the Dodd-Frank legislation. You know, we've got a Republican government. Trump was a hotel developer, still is a hotel developer in in his private business activities. Obviously, he talks to banks a lot. He's picked up stories that they don't like the Basel III capital regime. I'm not surprised either. And there is therefore some easing of the constraints on the American banking system. And then, third thing to say here is that uh, Jay Powell's also said that this process of the Federal Reserve shrinking its balance sheet to get back to normal, well, he said in December that this was on autopilot, that the Fed would be trying to shrink the balance sheet by $50 billion a month. It's now indicated, no, this is actually, um, we'll see how things turn out and we may change the figure. Okay. So it's all these, these developments happening, which to me indicate that we're likely not to get a further slowdown in US money growth. And therefore, we don't need to be too alarmed about a weakening economy in the USA and certainly not worried about a recession. So we've had this amazing period of eight years in the USA of, as I said, parallel, you know, two straight lines of the growth of normal GDP and the growth of money. And we've also, you know, we've seen this incredibly stable period with this amazingly stable figures. What's my view about 2019 in the USA? Probably just the same. So although there may be some worries about what's going on in the Eurozone in 2019, well, for the moment, I'm very relaxed about what's happening in America. And there might have nine, even 10 years of 2020 is like this of uh, steady money growth, steady growth on the GDP, no inflation, macroeconomic perfection. Thank you very much.